morning Facebook fans, John here at Colton RV. Today we're going to be going over a, uh, a generator here. Um, if you were to t take this, buy it, bring it home and pull it out of the box and how to get it prepared, ready to start. There's a few things that you have to do um, before you start it. Don't just dump gas in and start or you're going to have a very broken generator pretty quickly. Um, so we're going to start with, uh, with adding the engine oil. Uh, there are directions in the box, which I've already read, uh, to save you guys a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of pain and agony of me sitting here reading it. But we're going to start here. The, uh, the Cummins generator, owning generator, does come with um, oil designed for it, uh, the correct weight and capacity. It also comes with the funnel. And it actually came with a, uh, a nice tool kit if you did have to open the access panels for any reason. Um, most of this, or all of this, should be um, no tools required um, for at least the initial startup. So we're going to start by opening this uh, oil fill and access cover here. It's just pushed down on this little tab and it opens up. Just place it over to the side here. If you reach inside the engine here, if you want to come up closer with the camera, this here is your oil um, fill and check. So you're just going to unscrew it lefty loosey. And if you have big hands, it's, uh, it's not as fun. So again, here's the, uh, the dipstick on how you're going to check. There's a tiny bit of oil in it, and that's most likely just from the break-in from the factory. Take your uh, your funnel here. We're going to crack the oil open here. And I guess I should mention before you do this, on the, uh, on the face panel, just make sure all your switches are engaged to off, and you know nobody's around that can come over and accidentally try and start this thing. Um, you know, and you shouldn't have gasoline added in it at this point. You know, make sure you fill the oil first. So we're going to take this here. Pour it in nice and slow. You don't want to go super fast or you can spill it all over the place inside or all over the ground here. So we almost got the whole thing in there. I just want to stop and do a quick check here. We'll let that drain for a second. If you take the funnel out and just tip it back real quick, then you can pour it in there so you're not getting a leaking mess all over the place. Get a little bit of paper towel, so get a little drip in there and clean it up. We're going to take our drain plug, stick it back in there. We got oil on the dipstick, we're in good shape. It's at a good level to start. We'll put this cap back on. This particular one does have electric start, so we're gonna come over to this panel here. Again, same thing, you're just gonna push down on the on the thumb tab here, open it up. The battery's pre-installed from the factory. It's just disconnected through this quick connect um, here. So again, it's uh, male into female, male into female, you'll just connect the two. And then red wire, red wire is another indicator just to make sure you got it right. But you can't really hook this up backwards if you, even if you wanted to, or you shouldn't be able to. We'll pop the cover back on. And then we're gonna go to our gasoline. Pop that lid off there. I tried talking to Bob into letting me use a big funnel, but uh, that idea was shot down. He didn't want gasoline all over the parking lot. <laughs> Any questions to, to this point? Do you know how many uh, gallons this will hold? This I'd have to look. The smaller ones are two to three. This bigger one I believe is three, or three to four, but we'll look to confirm. And we should have enough there to, uh, we should have enough in there to start it here. So we'll put the lid back on. We've got about half a gallon in there, but no load. So we're going to come to the uh, the start panel here. We're going to make sure that this is on the run position. We're going to make sure that this is turned to on. And with any luck. <laughs> Remote start. The first run 
so we're gonna let it kind of work its way out. So you can hear it's nice and quiet. I'm not really yelling over it. You can hear me. It's, this thing is awesome for how quiet it is. And this one does 4,500 watts, which is awesome. You know, we can have a conversation next to it, and it's not uh, it's not insanely loud. I don't have to yell over it, uh, which is nice. You might be able to get away with this at uh, campgrounds with quiet hour, maybe. Um, don't do it. I mean, there's a rule. It's quiet hour. You're not supposed to have it running, but this one is super quiet, so you might get away with it. Um, in the event that the electric starts not working, you catch your battery dead. Uh, there's uh, another electric start on the face of the panel here, and that's right here. Uh, and then last resort, you know, the old-fashioned way, just giving it a good old full start. Um, that should work just fine there. Uh, looking on the panel here, we're, you know, we got a green light. That's indicating that we have power, we're ready to go, it's not overloaded, we don't have low oil. Uh, and the uh, start indicator is green, which means the engine's running. Yeah. And to touch base on this again, uh, I believe Sean went through this a little bit with the features. You got a USB port for power. You got your standard outlets, and then you've got your uh, your RV30 amp here. Awesome little generator, very quick to prep, uh, at a great price. It's uh, very very cost effective for uh, for what you get. So, and we're going to shut it down here. Very simple. That's that's the uh, the prep, the PDI for your uh, your Onan 4500 portable generator. I want to thank you guys for joining us today and catch us next week. I believe our crew down at Orchard Park, Lawrence, will be taking the lead on it next week uh, with some more fun information for you.